So following on from my first video on learning to play the bass guitar, where I was talking about learning the fretboard, learning the notes, now you want some practical experience playing along with some chords and some rhythms. And you've probably realised that the easiest way to play bass is to find the root note of the chord that the guitarist or the keyboard player is playing and play along with that. And I've recorded lots of little rhythms and little drum tracks here to demonstrate how to do it simply and how to embellish it, how to make it better. So we're going to start with a really easy pattern here. And what we have here is just a simple drum pattern. I've done all these in the key of A major. A is a nice comfortable key to play in on the bass guitar. But obviously all this can be moved up and down. So you need to know that this is A, the fifth fret of the low E string. Okay, that's your first port of call. And in this first pattern, I'm simply going to play the A note on the first and third beats of the bar. Okay, first and third beats of the bar. So you hear a little count in and then we'll be in. There we go, that wasn't very exciting that was it, but it's a start. Now that's obviously a lot better than just playing a single A in every bar. Play on the first and the third beats and that's better than just one note per bar. Let's make this a bit more interesting now. Now very often on the bass guitar we play what we call first and fifth. This is where we're playing the root note, the A note that goes with the A major chord played by our guitarist in the recording and then we go to the fifth of the scale of A to have a different note to play that works. Now how do we find the fifth? Well we can go up through the scale one, two, three, four, five. So we can come up to this note here which is E, seventh fret of the A string. So we can play A and E, A and E. So instead of playing A twice play A and E or you can go A and down to the E, down to the open E string. It's the same note, just an octave lower. So let's play the same pattern, but we'll play A and E now rather than just A. So immediately that's much more interesting, isn't it? Let's go to another drum pattern here and we have a pattern here called four on the floor where you have the bass drum or the kick drum on every beat of the bar. What I'm going to do first of all is simply play along with that kick drum playing four A notes along with those four on beats that are played by the kick drum. So here we go. Again, not very exciting, I know, but it's something that we can play along with that little pattern. We're not talking about technique, right hand or left hand. I'm just putting my second finger on the note. Make sure I put my finger close to the fret. I'm plucking with the index finger. You could use alternate fingers. You could use a plectrum. We're not going to get into technique today. We're simply talking about what you can play behind chords. Remember, this is a chord of A major. Right, so that was fairly boring. Let's double that up. So instead of playing crotchets, we'll play quavers. So instead of going A, 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 we'll do this. Now see, I'm walking my fingers. So I'm playing A, 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 one and two and three and four and. Let's play that same drum pattern, but with that improved bass line. That sounds a little bit more interesting, doesn't it? We could do the same thing with the higher A. Remember my tip about going up to and over to, so there was an A note. So if we come up two frets, over two strings, that's also an A. So let's do that running A on that high A with that drum pattern. Oh, 
obviously what you're trying to do there is to make that nice and smooth, nice and even, one and two and three and four. So it's improving the whole time, isn't it? We're going to change our kick drum pattern to what I call buff ba buff. <laughs> so if I run this, you'll hear that you've got a kick drum on the first beat of the bar, then you've got a kick drum on the end count of two, and then you've got a kick drum on beat three. So that's one, two, and three. One, two, and three. Or if you like, buff, ba buff, buff, ba buff. Let's have a listen to this without me actually playing the bass guitar. Take the guitar out. Buff, buff, buff. Hear it? Guitar back in. Okay, now what I'm going to do here, I could play A, A, A along with that. A, 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 or the high A. Right? And I could also do A, A, E. Low, A, A, E, high. You remember the first and the fifth that I did earlier? I can incorporate that into this pattern. I can play two A's and a low E, two A's and a high E. Can you hear that? Buff, ba buff pattern. Buff, ba buff. Right, let's do that then. Count in. Start adding that E note in. You're probably thinking this is sounding very country, but that doesn't matter. You could slow this down and it could be a ballad. Now remember I'm playing over A, Okay, so all this is working with an A major chord. Right, our next kick drum pattern is buff, 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 buff. One, two, and three, and four. One, two, and three, and four. So the first kick drum, bass drum, is on beat one. And the second kick drum is on the end of two. And the third kick drum is on the end of three. So you've got one bass drum, one kick drum on the beat, and two off. So the bass guitar to work with it would sound like this. Notice that bit of percussion I'm doing on beat two. See, slapping on the string there. Like that, and you could add an extra A if you like. Try doing it higher. Two fingers. You could incorporate the fifth, that E note. track shall we so a little bit more interesting now let's add that extra note at the end You may have heard the term rhythm section, and that's what I am at the moment. My bass guitar playing is 
going along with that drum pattern that I've recorded earlier and together we are the rhythm section for the song and it's like a, a solid wall that you can build upon adding guitars and vocals and keyboards all kinds of things but it's got to be really tight and that kick drum that bass drum and the bass guitar work together as you can hear and it's a really good sound isn't it but you've got to work at this to make sure you're really tight you're playing exactly at the same time as the kick drum now what we're going to do in our next pattern, we're going to take the last kick drum out of that pattern. So I'm just going to play the pattern, take the guitar out, can you hear, buff, 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 put the guitar back in, so this time instead of going, we're just going to go cut that last note dead. Now it's probably easier but it's a little bit strange sounding isn't it? So let's do that. Stops dead isn't it? Let's try it with a high A. Let's add in those E notes. is just against one chord but of course you can move everything around so that it fits with other chords and we'll do that a little bit in a minute. The next pattern I'm going to show you is a shuffle. Have a listen to this first of all so you know what I'm talking about. It's got a kind of a swing to it isn't it? So instead of it being da 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 it's da 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 so what we're going to do on our A notes, we're going to play like that, A, 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 or we can go A, 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 along with the hi-hat pattern. We can go A, A, E, A, A, E, and then come up to the E. Okay, so let's run this and see what we've got. recorded that guitar part I simply played one chord in A major. If I play an A minor chord instead of an A major it won't make any difference at all uh, because I'm not playing what's called the third and the third is the note that makes the difference. If I'm playing the first the A or the fifth the E everything will work just the same. So I'm going to run through these patterns again and I'm simply going to do the one after the other and then you will hear what I'm doing fits with the A minor chord as well. So we'll go to our first pattern. The chord will be A minor this time and not A major. I'm simply going to be playing on the first and on the third beat. I'm playing the note A which works with A major and A minor. Add in the E. See, it still works, doesn't it? So let's uh, go to our next pattern, our four on the floor. Running, or just straightforward crotchets. Let's go to our buff buff. A minor, but the bass note still works the same, it's fine. Let's add in the E. Another low one. Let's do the 
slightly funky one now. So here we go. High A. Add in the E note. Shuffle. So the point I'm trying to make here, it doesn't matter whether it's A major or A minor, all those riffs work fine with major and minor chords. Right, so that was all pretty straightforward, but if you didn't know it, it was hopefully useful and interesting to you. Let's make life a bit more interesting now by adding some different chords into our pattern. We're going to use the same drum patterns, but in our first example here, I'm going to play three chords on the guitar behind that drum pattern. I'm going to play an A major, a D major and an E major. So for the A chord, I'm going to play the A note, fifth fret of the E string, like I've been doing so far. For the D major chord, I'm going to play the note D, fifth fret of the A string. And for the E major chord, I'm going to play the note E, seventh fret of the A string. Now with the A, I can do first and fifth like that, going low or high. On the D major, I can play D and open A because A is the fifth of D. And I can get it on open A, and I can get it on the seventh fret of the D. So there was the A. Here's the D, see? For the E, now I haven't got an open B string. The fifth of E is B, so I can come over to the B here, adjacent string, see? And come up to it there, see? So let's just run this pattern. This is just A, D, and E, and the other thing I'm going to show you here is what we call the third and the octave. So if I'm playing A, there's A, which is the root note. Now the third note of the scale, A, B, C sharp, is there. So it's one fret lower and one string over. The first is A, the third is C sharp. So if you use your second finger on the A, your first finger is available for the C sharp. Now the fifth, as you know, is E. I use my little finger on that. And then come up to the A octave. So I can do a little run up, first, third, fifth octave. And that's over an A chord. So the same thing on the D. Lovely symmetrical instrument, just move it all over. For D major, you'd have D, F sharp, A, D. And for the E, you'd have E, G sharp, B, E. So same pattern. Alright, so I'm going to run this now and we're going to play the pattern that has A major, D major and E major and I'm going to get progressively more interesting with it as we go. So this is A, all of this. Now I'm going to go to D. Go to the A, open A or I can come over to the E string. B are the notes I want, first and fifth, we'll come up to it.
play just the first and the fifth and the octave. Maybe not the whole time, just occasionally. Let me show you that. I'm saying first I'm talking about the root notes if the guitar is playing A an A major chord or an A minor chord I'm playing the note A the fifth is E and the octave is A Do you remember up to and over to so there's A that's the first there's the octave there's the fifth and the third is down there so you're picking out notes in the scale the first the third the fifth and the eighth and this is the major scale of course and then simply move it over for D and up for the E. Like I've said several times, the bass guitar is beautifully symmetrical, so everything is movable up and down and across. So that was quite an interesting little pattern. Let's make it a bit more exciting. Let's change our bass drum pattern to four on the floor and let's add another chord in now. We're going to play a chord of F sharp minor. In the key of A major, your main three chords are always going to be A, D and E. So I've been playing over that. If we're going to introduce a minor chord, we're going to introduce three possible ones. The first of these is F sharp minor. Now you only need to play F sharp. So down here, second fret is fine. Second fret of the E string or the fourth fret of the D string. Okay, you could simply play first and fifth, like that, or just the F sharp itself. But I'm going to show you a little minor riff that you can use, and it goes like this. Now I'm playing F sharp, I'm playing open A, which is the minor third. I'll show you here on the E string. Minor third is up, one, two, three frets. So I'm playing F sharp, A, C sharp, which is the fifth, and F sharp, which is the octave. Now with this one, the A is open, so I can use the open string. I could just play first, fifth, and octave, that'd be fine. Or just octaves, or just the root note. But here we are specifically playing a minor riff, so F sharp, A, C sharp, D and the E, just like before. Right, so let's run this one. It's going to have our four on the floor, but the chords are A, F sharp minor, D and E, a very typical chord sequence in the key of A major. So this is all that A major. Here's F sharp, just play the root note to start with. Upper F sharp, a D, and the E, now this time when I get to the F sharp minor I'm going to play that minor riff I showed you. Some of that was quite busy. Be aware of being too busy as a bass player. Some of that was quite busy and might be a bit too much for other members of the band. So if they say to you, you know, you're sounding a bit busy, if you're doing things like, you might be better off just playing the root note or the first and the fifth. 
don't get too busy. There's nothing worse than a frustrated lead player playing bass guitar in a band. But these are all ideas that you can run with and develop yourself. So that was A, F sharp minor, D and E. Now, very often in the key of A major, we have B minor. So I'm going to play A major, D major as my second chord. Then I'm going to go to B minor and then up to the E. So B minor, we need to play a B, second fret of the A string. So the fifth is here, okay, which is the note F sharp, fourth fret of the D string, or I can get it here on the second fret of the low string. I can get B here on the E string, seventh fret. So my B riff this time, I can play second fret of the A string, open D is my minor third, my F sharp is my fifth, and my B is my octave. What to show you this as well? Now that's the same riff, just in a different place. I'm starting on B, seventh fret of the E string, I'm playing the D, fifth fret of the A string, I'm playing the F sharp, fourth fret of the D string, and the octave B, fourth fret of the G string. So my shape this time is finger four, finger two, finger one, finger one. I can do it here as well. So the last two notes are the same. So you'll see that cropping up as I play this pattern. Uh, our bass drum pattern, our kick drum pattern is buff ba buff this time. So here we go. Starting with A. Now I'm going to go to D now. to notice there I did a nice corny but very satisfying run down at the end there which was E D C sharp B to take me back to my A. I'm sure you've heard that before if you've listened to bass guitar tracks and notice when I did the B riff I played my second note instead of using open D I played fifth fret of the A string. This is where it pays to know your fretboard, to know that you've got the note D on the fifth fret of the A string and on open D. So that was our A, D, B minor, E pattern with a buff, buff, buff. Now we're going to do the buff, 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 buff pattern and we're going to change our minor chord. Another minor chord that crops up in the key of A is C sharp minor. So you need to find C sharp fourth fret of the A string. You could just play first and fifth or just the actual note itself, just play C sharp. You can do your pattern. Now you haven't got an open string this time so you'd have to play C sharp, fourth fret of the A string, E, seventh fret of the A string and then you'd have to play the G sharp, sixth fret of the D string and the octave C sharp, sixth fret of the G string. So, or you could do it here. Just change the position of the first note, play the C sharp on the ninth fret of the E string instead of the fourth fret of the A string. Get the idea? The order of chords this time is A, then C sharp minor, then D, then E. And by the way, it's four bars of each one, in case you hadn't realised. So we're going to run this pattern. This is our uh, buff, buff, buff pattern. Okay? Here we go, C sharp minor. See there again, I'm 
hitting the, the bass line and the kick drum pattern. Keep the E nice and simple. Let's do our run down again, shall we? So you can see how that's really interesting. To be very honest with you, that's probably a bit too busy to play all the way through a song, but it just shows you what can be done with a little bit of knowledge about the chords and the notes that work with them. Right, we're going to do a chord sequence, which is A, B, D and E, all major chords. This is another very typical sequence in the key of A major. So there's our A. B is the same thing moved up two frets. So 7th fret of the E string is the root note, 6th fret of the A string is the third of the scale, that's the note D sharp, then we come up to F sharp which is the ninth fret of the A string, and the octave B is the ninth fret of the D string. Don't forget we've got a B there, and an octave B there, and we've got a third there, so we can do that pattern there and there as well. Two places for doing it. And then the D and the E we've done before. And this is where we subtracted the final kick drum from our pattern. corny rundown. So this is developed very quickly hasn't it from just going A, 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 which is fine sometimes that's all you need I must stress that okay. But isn't it lovely to be able to move around the instrument, move around the fretboard knowing that what you're playing is fitting perfectly with your chords. The last thing I'm going to show you here is the shuffle and I'm going to use a minor chord pattern. I'm going to use A minor, D minor, and E minor. If I'm on A, I can't use this note because that's the major third. I've got to use this note. So I have to go from A to C to E to A. So instead of going da, da I go da, da, because that note there is the note that fits with the minor chord. That's what makes the minor chord what it is. It's that, that note there. So for A, you'd have A, C, E and A. You can play the C here, so instead of playing it on the 3rd fret of the A string, you can play it on the 8th fret of the E string, like that, see? It's probably more comfortable to come down for it. So D minor would be, would be D, obviously, 5th fret of the A string, then you'd have F, 3rd fret of the D string, then you'd have A, 7th fret of the D string, and the octave D, 7th fret of the G string. Okay? This is that shuffle pattern, don't forget, so you have to bear that in mind when you're playing, make sure you fit it to the pattern. And the E, of course, seventh fret of the A string is E, the minor third note is G, which is fifth fret of the D string, come up to the ninth fret of the D string for the fifth note, which is B, and the octave E is uh, ninth fret of the G string. So It's the same shape throughout. Here's the A minor riff. Now the D minor and the E minor. It's the same thing moving over, moving up, moving across. It's brilliant, isn't it? So we'll 
play this pattern, but we've got to adapt our timing because it's going to be a shuffle. is very busy you wouldn't want to do that all the way through so what you could do is just play the first and that minor third what you could do is just use the first and the fifth and then throw in that minor third note every now and again there's the D now first and fifth first and minor third up to the fifth Probably a bit too much going up to the octave. Let's just do this one again, shall we, and show you that. rundown I did at the end notice I incorporated that minor third note before I would have played E D C sharp B but now because we're in this minor key I've got to make sure I play this note here of C so there's a lot to digest there for you I know and I keep saying this but just to stress again don't get too busy don't get too ambitious don't try and cram in too much you know if you throw in everything about the kitchen sink on every song you're going to get into trouble with your fellow bandmates so keep it simple put the odd nice little ornament in without going too crazy i hope you enjoyed this if you did please give it a like and consider subscribing to my channel if you have any questions do get in touch through my youtube channel thank you very much for watching and you'll see me in my next video